Okay, my friends, as promised, um, when I did my first of this new series uh, two days ago, um, when I showed you the original Greek and Hebrew transcripts for the narrow gate, and then I did a uh, video today, yesterday on just end time stuff. Now, another sermon. I'm going to try this every other day. Uh, end times news sermon, end times news sermon. That way you'll be getting tons. You'll be getting more church in a week here than you probably get in a, in a month where you go. And on top of that, when you talk about the true word of God you hear from here, it'd be like getting 100 years worth of church in just of uh, probably six months here. So now we're going to talk about the parable of the ten virgins. And again, it's drastically changed by the original Greek and Hebrew transcripts. As I said in the video in the sermon two days ago, we're responsible for the original transcripts. The Bible is not written in our language. We can't use that as an excuse uh, at the great white throne judgment when backslidden Christians are cast into the lake of fire forever because they say they were told by their pastor, their teacher, their watchman, some genius, some biblical genius, that uh, their Bible was correct and they didn't bother to do the groundwork to, to research. First, they'd have enough common sense to discernment, then they would have known it was wrong to start with. But again, the apostate church needs to be spoon fed, needs to be spoon fed of like a little baby. And that's what I'm doing. I know a lot of my brothers and sisters don't need to be spoon fed of the few thousand who are loyal to my ministries. But for the majority out there, you need to be spoon fed like a little baby. So it's time to put on the bibs and let's break out the scripture. I'd rather make you upset at me and have you be able to change your ways and go to heaven than to have you love me like the false teachers across Facebook and YouTube and everywhere else in your churches and end up in hell because of the lies that I told you like, like your pastors do. Let's go to the King James Version Bible, Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened to ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in the vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at the midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, No, so lest there not be enough, be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And they that went to buy, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward, came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man, I think it's, I think it's cometh. Let me get to the very end. I don't want to leave anything for chance, change any words. Cometh, correct. <coughs> now understand in the original Greek Hebrew transcripts, that word midnight means the the rapture. It means the harpazo. It means the catching away. Harpazo and catching away are the old terms. It means the snatching away when Christ takes his bride. And didn't that sound familiar in verse 12? But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. What did Christ say? He's going to tell people at the great white throne judgment. Away from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Exactly what he's saying right here. So let's go ahead and go to the original Greek and Hebrew transcripts, break this down to the, to the bone marrow so you can understand exactly what the scripture is saying. Pure virgins in the original transcripts. Believers, when they are pure, chaste, i.e. faithful to Christ, their heavenly bridegroom. So virgins all start out pure, chaste, faithful to Christ, their heavenly bridegroom. Pure virgins stay that way. Wise, personal mindset to regulate one's outward behavior. Hmm. So we have a personal mindset to strive to live like Jesus Christ every day, to change our outward behavior, not just talk with our lips, but our outward behavior, to repent of our sins after we're saved. Mm, very interesting. Foolish. Personal lifestyle causes one to become stupid, dumb, empty, to cease doing what one learned and is now condemned. Hmm. So in other words, if you've already been saved and you're saved by grace and it doesn't matter what you do, how can you unlearn what you've already learned and be now condemned? Hmm. Because you have to repent. Lamp. The light that emanates from one's heart and shines through their acts and deeds and life and is fueled by oil to our body, soul, and spirit. 
okay? Now the oil that fuels our lamps, the fuel that makes the lamp burn bright or lack of it to burn dim or be doused out with no more light, i.e. the Holy Spirit. Bridegroom, Jesus Christ. The shut door, unable to enter the marriage feast, i.e. supper, left out, excluded, i.e. left behind from the bridegroom's plans. Hmm. So you read this scripture and what it tells you is that the five, all, all of these are Christians to begin with. There's 10 of them. Five of them decided to live their lives pure and holy. They decided to regulate their own mindset, change their outward behavior, to walk on the narrow path to the straight gate and to keep their lamps, their bodies, spirits, and souls filled with oil, the Holy Spirit, to be ready for the midnight hour, the catching away harpazo, snatching away the rapture. You get this, my friends? So they won't be told away from me by the, by the bridegroom, I never knew you. The other five of the virgins started out on the right path, but they chose to become foolish. They, they chose a personal lifestyle that caused them to become stupid, dumb, empty, to cease doing what they learned and are now condemned. Their lamps, their bodies, souls, and spirits are no longer filled with the Holy Spirit. He has left them because they're living in a backslidden state, a, a iniquity and sin state, if you will. And it's a known fact. The Holy Spirit is holy. He's not going to stay within you. The scripture says this right here in the original transcripts. It's telling you exactly what I just said. It's giving you the word. You believe what you want to believe. All I can do is an anointing called watchman of Jesus Christ. And, and pastor Jesus Christ is to tell you the truth, feed the flock. If you don't want to, to take the food I'm giving you from God's word, hey, between you and Christ, I can't help you anymore. I'm not going to be around much longer to be able to help you. I'll be either raptured or possibly caught away or dead. Here's the bottom line. Jesus Christ is your only hope, my friends. If you've never been saved, you're backslidden, pray the prayer. Do the six steps in a box below the video. No one's guaranteed more time in your life. If you'd like prayer, contact me. I pray for you every day without fail. True Christians, what's the prayer for the lost daily? It's your job. If you're not doing it, do it now. If you are, great. And look up our different draw off nine. We fly soon. May God bless you. Share this video. Please wake up, my friends. Look for the for the video tomorrow on the end times and a sermon again, Lord willing, in two days. We fly soon. May God bless you. Share this. Bye.